uh, ink cap. Again, the ink cap with the safety components, seat belt first, and proper mount and security to the cap. The seat belt itself is, has no cuts or frays. It latches and unlatches properly. It's proper mount and security to the seat and to the floor. I have a 10 pound BC fire extinguisher, proper mount and secure under the sleeper. I also have three bi directional triangles, proper mount and secure under the sleeper. I have spare fuses and breakers in the glove box for this truck. Now I'm going to begin with a safe start. When I turn the key on, you'll see an ABS light come on and go off. ABS light came on and has went off. When I start the engine, my oil pressure must rise in three to five seconds. If not, I'll shut the engine down and call the mechanic. The oil pressure is rising now to normal operating range. My driver's side mirror, it is properly mounted and secure, it is not cracked, bent, or broken, and it is adjusted to my view. The windshield, properly mounted and secure, it is not cracked, bent, or broken, there is no illegal stickers, and the weather stripping is intact. My passenger side mirror, properly mounted and secure, it is not cracked, bent, or broken, and it is adjusted to my view. I come back to the steering wheel and just work down into the column. My city horn works. My highway horn works, my left turn signal works, my right turn signal works, my four-way flashers work, my headlights, they work on high and low beam. My windshield wipers, properly mounted and secure, all the hardware is present, the windshield wipers work, the washer fluid works. Now I'll move into the instrument panel. My oil pressure is properly mounted and secured, and it is at the correct operating range. The water coolant temperature gauge is properly mounted and secured, and it is at the correct op operating range. The tack and speedometer are properly mounted and secured and are working. My voltmeter is properly mounted and secured, and it is in the correct operating range. My fuel and diff, they are properly mounted and secured, and they are showing a half tank of fuel and a full tank of diff. My primary and secondary air gauges are properly mounted and secure, and they are at the correct operating range. My defrost. My defrost works. My heater it is working as well. Now, I have to perform a tug test. You cannot miss any portion of the braking system. I begin with a tug test. I will place the truck into the first gear. I will release the tractor brakes and tug against my trailer. I'll set my tractor brakes back and release the trailer brakes and tug against the tractor. Now I have to do a service brake check. I will pull forward roughly five miles an hour and check the service brake. Service brake board. Truck in neutral, set my brakes. I build my air pressure up to governor kick out, which is between 120 and 140 or manufacturer recommendation. Once it reaches governor kick out, you'll hear the truck sneeze. truck is now at governor kick out. I put the truck in first gear, turn the engine off, release the clutch, release both truck and trailer, and turn the engine back on. Now, I must say, in a combination vehicle, I can lose no more than 4 PSI in a minute. I will now put my foot on the brake. I will hold the brake pressure for one minute. Okay, it's been a minute. I'll release the brake pressure and I will begin a leak down. I pump the brakes until my truck reaches 60, 80, or manufacturer recommendation.
when it gets to 60, 80, I will say a visual and audible warning. I have a visual and audible warning. Now between 20 and 40, or manufacturer recommendation, my brake valves will pop out engaging the spring brakes on the truck and trailer. That concludes the in-cab portion of the pre-trip inspection.